All right, today in Photoshop, we're going to take these three pictures and make one good picture out of them. The family picture right there, Stephanie is missing from it, and my other niece, which we're going to see shortly, isn't smiling. I took about 10 pictures of this, and this is the best one. Not this one, but the other one. Um, and Vicky right here is the only one who's not looking. So we took her from another shot, and we're going to put him in put her into this picture right here where she's not looking. She's the only one in this whole group that wasn't looking in this one particular picture, the best picture. So, we're going to go over to the clone stamp tool and we are going to choose it. Now, whenever you choose a tool, the top row right here are the controls for that tool. With the clone stamp tool, you can adjust the size of it. We're going to make it just a little bit bigger than this. This is, I think, 10. And we're going to bump it up to 20 or 12, I think. And there are all the tools and different brushes you could use. Now it says you're going to have to push Alt. So I'm going to go over the picture I want to start on. I'm going to push Alt. Give me the crosshair right there. And bam, I have it. Now I'm going to go over to the next picture and push down, click my mouse, and now I'm going to transpose or transform Vicky's face from the le right onto the picture onto the left. And bam, there we have it. All done. Now to go on, we'll take a look at it. We're going to use the zoom control minus take a look at the two pictures and now she's looking good so just to show you a view there's zoom in and out but on the right side it shows you control plus and control minus which are the keyboard shortcuts which I use a lot but when I try to do a movie like this a tutorial I try to show you where it is sometimes I forget though all right so we have this picture we closed her picture now we're going to take Stephanie out of this picture which I had to stand behind a white background to make it easy to do this and I'm going to start at the hard place uh, before the grass the grass is usually the hardest now I'm going to choose where, where if I can find it there it is the magnetic lasso tool and once again the top row changes for the particular tool you're using and as I start over here I I'm laying down too many little squares, anchor points. So I'm just going to mess this up. I'm going to pull it out and double click. And now I'm going to control Z, which is undo. And I'm going to change the frequency of the anchors. Instead of 100, I'm going to have it 50. And this gives me not as many anchor points, which I like for this job particularly. The last job I had it set to 100 rows is a very fine detailed job. Now when you go along here you're gonna see that I'm gonna make a little mistake and if you push the delete button it moves back an anchor point. So if the magnetic lasso tool sticks itself to somewhere where you don't want it to go you just use the delete button and then you go back and then to put down an anchor put point you just push the left mouse button as you're doing this and right over here I want to get to the corner here I'm gonna click I'm gonna put an anchor point down and now I'm gonna move over to the left and now when I get to the end of the picture and I want to move it as I did before I'm gonna hold down the space button and it turns it into a hand and then you can move the picture if you move it if you let go of the mouse up the line like that see how it you're allowed to it allows you to follow the line more easily. Now I'm speeding up this part of the video because this took me a while to go around her hair. I had to keep on delete, delete, there goes delete, and getting it exactly where I want it. Now I'll cheat a little bit. There we go. One more time. I let go of the space button. Now see that time? I had to go back, delete, and follow and get that clean line. All right, now we're getting down to the bottom. Once again, we'll let go of the mouse right there. It'll make a line. Very nice. Now, I realize that I'm being too critical over here. Delete. So, oh, 
Uh, that's all right. Okay. And once we get to where we started from, we double click. And we have Stephanie cut out of this picture. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make another file. I'm going to put her in an old file. First, I'm going to copy her, Control C, and then File, New. And I'm going to make a new file. Now, when you do this, if you notice, it says Preset Clipboard over here. That gives you the right size of the picture over here so it'll only be for the size of the paste so now I have my new picture my blank and control V and paste her in now I'm able to save the picture and cut out the between her legs and between her arms so first we'll do this one arm and once again, I've sped this up to save time. To get rid of those sections after you highlight and get a, a circled section, you just push the delete button, and there it goes. It deletes that. Now Stephanie's transparent. And once I save her, I can put her in any picture very easily from that picture right there. Save it as a Photoshop file, and you can just drag her into any picture as I'm going to drag her into this picture now. I'm going to choose the Move tool, and I also made her smaller before because, as you can see, she's, she's, as you can see, she is still too big. So I'm going to zoom in here, and I talk to my niece Denise. All right, Control T, tra full transform. Once you do that, you have to make sure to push this button right here. That locks the proportion. Without that, every time you move it she become fat or skinny or tall or without the proportion. Now I talked to my niece Denise, the girl standing to her right with the blonde hair, and I asked I found out that they're about the same size. So I'm trying to make her look the same size as Denise. Alright, I'm happy with that, so I'll apply it before I use the move tool. And now the move tool will let me move her where I want to put her. Now I'm gonna try to align her with her feet I see where her, where the edge of the floor is, right there. So I'm going to put her around there, and she's a little bit taller than my daughter, Katie, in the pink on the right. So that looks to be about the right size, the right height. So now, now I'm going to erase her. So I'm on the layer of Stephanie, and I take the eraser tool, and I'm going to erase her to make her transparent behind the fence and the other people supposedly in front of her. Once again, I go to my tool, and I make the circle a little bit bigger, and quickly get past that. And I also had a picture to see what I am trying to do, and where I have to go. So I have a picture right there that flashes up, and this is all sped up very fast, because this was a very time-consuming process right over here. As you can see, it's sped up very fast. And sooner or later, you're happy with what you have. And there's Stephanie standing behind the fence and behind the other people. So now I'm going to the layer of the background, and I'm just going to sharpen a little bit. And also, now I'm going to just double check it, make sure I'm happy with that. I'm going to look at the other people. I'm going to undo it. And then I'm going to redo the sharpen and it looks pretty good so I just have a couple more adjustments to make before I close this and save this photo for printing I'm also gonna uh, check the levels uh, control L gives you the levels there are the levels and I'm also gonna do the balance of the of the uh, color balance a little bit it looks a little faded here and there's the new little bit brighter colors. Uh, there's the back and forth. Looks looks pretty good to me. And uh, that's it for now.